Today on Plant-Based Kidney Health, we are addressing the question, are eggs okay to eat for people with kidney disease? So to start it off, Dr. Hashmi, what are the pros and cons of eating eggs for people specifically with kidney disease? And what does the research say? Yeah, this is a really complex question. It's very, very controversial. It's been going back and forth for the longest time. If you look at all of the national health bodies, I think pretty much every single decade, the tables have turned. So for one decade, they'll say eggs are healthy. The other decade, they'll say eggs are terrible. If you're in certain diet camps, you'll end up finding that every diet camp has their own opinions. Some are evidence-based, some are evidence-informed, some are just passion-informed. And so our job is to take all of the passion out of this and to try to figure out what the heck is the real answer. And let me just say straight off the bat is, is we don't have a very good answer, we have an okay answer that's constantly evolving. So what I'll give you is the best answer that we can come up with as of today in terms of the pros and cons and sort of what you can walk away with. And then when you start to think about the pros and why eggs are so popular, there's a few reasons. First, they're very inexpensive. When you start to look at all of the different protein sources, you look at livestock and the amount of energy you have to provide, the land you have to provide, the water you have to put into the land, the calories you have to put into the livestock to grow them, the time, energy, so forth. Eggs are very inexpensive. They're easily available. There's a very high biological value. What I mean by that is all your essential amino acids, all the amino acids that you need to survive, they're available and they're available in the right proportion. When you look at eggs, eggs are a very rich source of leucine. Remember, if you're somebody who's looking to build muscle, and this becomes incredibly important for patients on dialysis who need a rich source of leucine because your risk of dying on dialysis is directly linked to how much muscle you have left. So leucine becomes very important. And the only other source of protein that actually has any sort of higher availability of protein inside our body ends up being whey. So that's some of the pros. Now, when we talk about patients on dialysis, remember, because dialysis is such a catabolic state, we end up looking for sources that are very highly bioavailable. And that's where people start to talk about things like whey and etc. But we've talked about this idea of having a net renal acid load and how we can reduce the acid load. And that's where the idea of eggs comes in because the idea of eggs is they're very low on the acid scale. The part that becomes really interesting is, is the composition of eggs. Eggs are a rich source of phospholipids. We've talked about this in the past episodes where we said when it comes to specific types of phospholipids, specifically phosphatidylcholine, what happens is these phospholipids can preferentially go inside things like our HDL. We know that the medicines that have been created, if they raise your HDL, there is no benefit in mortality. But if you're able to raise your HDL naturally, there is a protective benefit. It's just that the medications we've come up with, they haven't done anything. So fascinatingly enough, phospholipids can raise HDL and that in itself can translate into a positive benefit. Then you start to flip things around a little bit and you say, well, what about some negatives? Well, eggs have phosphorus. The egg yolk specifically has phosphorus. But if you look at egg whites, egg whites have only about five milligrams. Egg yolks have about close to about 90, 95 milligrams or so. So that's part of it. Egg yolks are a rich source of choline. This becomes very controversial because if you watch our video where we talk about this idea of trimethylamine N-oxide, you start with trimethylamine oxide and you have this conversion that goes on, but choline can convert into the precursor, which can then go on to form TMAO. The problem there is, is TMAO is a pro atherogenic or it forms plaques inside our blood vessels. So it's linked to clots, it's linked to plaques building up, it's linked to heart failure in the body. So it sounds terrible and it sounds like, wow, if I eat eggs, eggs have choline, it's gonna do all sorts of bad things. But choline is very beneficial in the brain. It's needed for babies to develop their brains. So 
On one hand, choline is good. On the other hand, it forms TMO. What gives? Well, what gives is the type of gut bacteria you have. So just because you're having eggs doesn't mean you're going to form TMEO. TMEO is going to form if you have the wrong gut bacteria. And the wrong gut bacteria has a lot to do with how much junk food, how much sugar is in your diet, how much processed food is in your diet. So it's not just the eggs that you end up consuming. This is the same sort of argument that goes with people who are getting a lot of carnitine supplementation, that carnitine will also increase TMAO. So it's quite different as far as all of those things goes. Now, we also know that when you look at chronic kidney disease patients, chronic kidney disease patients suffer from all sorts of eye problems. They end up having glaucoma, they end up having diabetic retinopathy. They end up suffering from things like age-related macular degeneration. But when you look at eggs, eggs are a rich source of a couple of things, lutein, zeaxanthin. And so what happens there is, is both of these things, lutein and zeaxanthin, can go and they can accumulate inside the retina and they can slow down the occurrence of all of these diseases. And eggs happen to be a great source of these. So if you're consuming eggs, you're getting these. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get lutein and you can't get zeaxanthin from other sources, but eggs happen to be a source of these. And then the final confusing aspect of eggs is the fact that when you look at population-based studies, the population-based studies that we have presented to you guys, where we've shown that European data shows that eggs are helpful if you consume them, American-based studies show that if you consume eggs are harmful, it's very hard to tease out the fact that a lot of the American population, what happens when they're consuming eggs? They're sitting there and consuming bacon with it, right? Everything is fried. It's not just the egg. It's the egg that's loaded with salt and fried and double fried to make sure that it was fried well the first time around. So the bottom line with eggs is, is the data is actually not really saying the eggs are harmful. What the data is pointing out is if you end up consuming eggs, it's the preparation of the eggs and what you're doing with it and the rest of the lifestyle. So the pros and the cons, the jury is still favoring that eggs are more likely to be safe than not, but how you prepare them is going to end up damaging or not damaging your body. So that's a, a whole lot of stuff to take. So then, Michelle, what about sort of on the vegan spectrum or plant-based egg substitutes? Because I know we have a huge base of folks that follow us that are purely plant-based and vegan, and they're interested in that portion of the question. Yeah. So unfortunately, a lot of the egg substitutes um, often end up being high in sodium, and a lot of them will have phosphorus additives, typically because they're trying to make them fluffy and they have baking powder in them. So mm -hmm. then they have phosphorus additives. So um, I'd say maybe potential benefit of the egg substitute would be it's it's likely going to be lower in protein. Um, so if someone's with kidney disease on a low protein diet, um, but it's really looking at that ingredient list and it's not usually the best option. Um, it doesn't mean someone can't have it every once in a while, but I think for someone who's vegan, fully plant-based, not consuming <clears throat> eggs, then it's best to have minimally processed um options instead of these egg substitutes. So um, one of the things there, if you are a baker or any type of recipe that would use egg for like binding, like, I don't know, pancakes or waffles or um, anything like that, you can make a flax egg instead of using an actual egg. And all you do is mix one tablespoon of ground flaxseed with two to three tablespoons of water. You let that sit for about five minutes. Um, the flaxseed absorbs some of that water and that can be your binding agent instead of egg. Um, another thing is you think of like egg, a lot of times people like to do a scramble, right? Scrambled eggs. So you can use tofu, um, like a tofu veggie scramble instead of eggs. And that's a better option than a more highly processed egg substitute. Um, and for that, really, the, the key is you want to press the water out of the tofu, crumble it in the pan. You can use some turmeric for to give that orange color of the egg and then spices, seasonings and flavor. Um, you can really get an eggy texture with using tofu. 
The other thing you can do for um, like omelets, a substitute for that, you can use chickpea flour, mix that with some water, and then you can actually make omelets over a pan. And then that's a really easy egg substitute there. Um, and I also want to just emphasize, Dr. Hashmi, what you were saying about the, you know, it's really what the egg is paired with. And we were talking about the potential renal acid load. And so, yes, eggs are not as high on the potential renal acid load as other animal protein. Um, but if you were to sit down and you had one large egg with one piece of toast that had butter on it, you put an ounce of cheese, and then you had one slice of bacon. Um, I did the calculation for it, and that's a positive 12 potential renal acid load, where if you took that same one large egg, you still had it with a slice of toast, but on the toast, you put a quarter of an avocado, you mixed your egg, um, the egg with some chopped up bell pepper, some raw spinach, and then you had a cup of blueberries on the side, that's a negative 3.6 potential renal acid load. So both dishes contain an egg, but one of them is much more kidney protective, where it's paired with fruits, veggies, some avocado, and the toast versus toast, cheese, butter, and bacon. And so that's, I mean, really what I would say, if you take anything away from this, we're not here to tell you um, you can or you can't have eggs. I think overall the question was, are eggs okay to eat if you have kidney disease? And if they're prepared and paired with the right food, then they're likely okay. Um, but making sure that you know what your individual protein needs are and that the amount you're consuming is not putting you over on protein and that you're pairing it with the right foods. So anything you want to add to that or summarize, Dr. Hashmi? No, I, I love that. And I think the answer that we've given is very sensible. It's very reasonable. I think oftentimes people are looking for a black and white answer. And in life, there's very few things that are black and white except for death and taxes. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, guys.